What does a museum curator do exactly? What does a museum curator do exactly? What does a museum curator do exactly? Well, I think I've spent about 11 years trying to figure that out. Uh, there are some of the more obvious things that people think curators do, uh, like curate collections. Determining uh, priorities for research and for collection care, um, uh, working with staff and volunteers to make sure that things are properly uh, preserved and uh, uh, easy to find. We do a lot. Uh, my main focus is, uh, I've been here for 26 years, and my main focus is really building this collection. Collecting pieces, doing research on those pieces, uh, and then writing why they're significant to the collections, and capturing that history so that that's preserved as well. Curating a, a collection of about 500,000 specimens takes up quite a lot of time, but curators here at the Museum Center do like a million other things, so every day is different. The curator beyond the collection, though, works on uh, research, of course, but also with other departments within the museum to create exhibits, uh, public programming. We do a lot of community outreach, so one of our main messages, of course, is public science education. So we'll go out to the community, whether it's through school groups, nature groups, talk about our areas of science, in my case, geology and paleontology. So I would say the answer to that question, what does the curator do, it depends on the day that we're in this job. What's my favorite museum artifact? What's my favorite museum artifact? What's your favorite museum specimen? Well, I have different favorites at different times. This is kind of difficult. I have several favorites in the collection. It's hard to say one favorite thing. I don't have one favorite artifact or object in the collections. The fact is there's hundreds, maybe thousands of things in all of the collections that I've seen over the years. If I had to pick one, and this is you know, one of, like I say, hundreds, maybe thousands of things in the collection, we do have a copy of Abraham Lincoln's Amnesty Proclamation, and that is a handwritten copy of the Am Amnesty Proclamation made by Abraham Lincoln for the Great Western Sanitary Fair right here in Cincinnati. So although Abraham Lincoln wrote this document entirely in his hand, it has a, a Cincinnati connection, which, which makes it exciting to me. I would have to say right now, um, it's a toss-up between a large sauropod dinosaur that they're we're trying to exhibit in the museum, so that takes a lot of work and a lot of attention. Um, but maybe, um, maybe the, my most favorite thing at the moment is a triceratops skull, which we just discovered this summer. Well, that's a, that's a tough question because I came here October 6th in 2014, so I am still getting to know the collection. and. Uh, one thing that did kind of stand out in the processing of the Union Terminal, this one specific Union Terminal collection, uh, there are a series of um, watercolor sketches by Vinehold Bryce, who did all the um, mosaic murals throughout the building, throughout the rotunda, and they're pretty amazing. What was your biggest geek out moment at work? What was your biggest geek out moment at work? Biggest geek out moment at work. I think we have these sort of geek out moments all the time, but uh, once in our ethnographic collections, of which I also supervise, we had a person bring in a beaded blanket band, uh, and he wanted to know something about it, and we told him that it was probably Sue, and it could have come from 1896 when the Sioux were at the Cincinnati Zoo. <clears throat> and we went through photographs of that time period when they were there, and we actually found a photograph of a Native American woman wearing the blanket with that exact band on it. Uh, and it just sent a chill down everyone's spine in the room. Every, all my coworkers know when I'm having that moment because I'm gonna walk around and bring it and show it to everybody. And if you can impress a bunch of people that are, you know, have history backgrounds and have seen a lot, it's, that's pretty cool. Um, latest was finding a, a George Washington signature and I, of course, put it on a cart and ran it down to my boss's office to show him immediately. And if you weren't a museum curator, what would you be doing with your life right now? I'd probably be trying to be a museum curator. If I wasn't a museum curator, what what would I be doing? And, you know, I, I could say this humorously, but, but actually it's maybe some truth to it. I might be selling insurance. I, I might well have had a career selling insurance because at the time I got my first job in public history, which was working for the Old Historical Society, I was applying for other jobs and one of those where I'd gotten called back was for an insurance company. So I like to say, had I not gotten that job in history, 
I might have had a nice career in insurance. Somehow or other, I think it worked out better for me that I wound up in history. There really isn't anything else I've ever really wanted to do. Uh, since I was three, I wanted to be a paleontologist. I was that little kid that knew every dinosaur name in the book, and I never outgrew that phase. And of course, I've always had a love and a fascination with museums. So for me, blending the two, being a paleontologist at the museum, has got to be the world's most perfect job. But I do have other side interests, like photography, so I could see myself working for National Geographic, traveling to all these super exotic places, taking photos of different kinds of animals and plants and fossils and people. And I think if, if I had to find another career, that would probably be where I'd go. I can't imagine doing something not in the history world. Um, it's just been my focus for most of my life. And um, unless you can get a job professionally just hiking in the woods, I think that museum curator is the only thing I really want to do. What's the weirdest question you've been asked? What's the weirdest question you've been asked? Um, uh, this is actually an easy question, uh, and I've had it asked more than once. Uh, when we give tours in the field, uh, I dig a uh, late prehistoric site here uh, near Cincinnati every summer. Uh, on two different occasions, I had someone ask me, why did these people live underground? Um, and at first, it seems like a bizarre question, but uh, that's where we're digging. We're below ground, and they just sort of assume uh, that they were digging underground. And you have to sort of explain why it's not there, but uh, I always love the question. I don't know about the weirdest, but I, maybe the most common that is asked me is, what's your favorite dinosaur? And I always tell people the cardinal because I can see it every day outside my, my window in my backyard. Living birds are direct descendants of a particular lineage of extinct theropod dinosaur. So I think that's amazing to people. It's one of our best uh, examples of evolutionary change through time. We can see uh, fantastic transitions from non-avian theropods to living birds. So that's probably the question that sticks in my mind the most.